hello and how are ya? It's me, Serena, and welcome back to the Bully Chic. And this week's second video of my Outlander boar hunting outfit that I am making. Actually, past Serena made that outfit. Oh, as you can see, I have a puppy, and he's much bigger than the puppies you'll see in the other clips of this video. Is basically because I made this outfit in the fall and. It is now the winter and I'm just now getting down to editing it. When I make an outfit and it takes me a while to edit, some things sometimes get lost. Like the intro <laughs> into that second video. Unfortunately that is lost. So I'm going to try to catch up. I made the second layer to my Outlander boar hunting outfit. If you want to hear more about the inspiration to that outfit, I'll link you to the first video. Basically I make a bodice. I kind of was on the fence of whether or not I want to make a sleeve bodice or a sleeveless bodice so I thought well I'll just make it a sleeveless bodice and if I want to add the sleeves on later I can maybe I'll do a lace-up sleeve like Claire wears in season one sometimes and I was kind of pressed for time and I was going to a renaissance festival that week and I really wanted to wear something renaissance-y if that's a word to this festival and a lace-up corset bodice type situation was going to do it. So I kind of took the unconventional route in making this bodice. I did not make this bodice from a single piece of fabric. I thrifted a wool blazer, which kind of sad how many wool blazers you can like, I don't know if it's because I live in the Midwest and I live near St. Louis, but there are a lot of wool, silk, uh, linen blend type blazers, especially the Pendleton brand in my local thrift that I have uh, several. Sorry. Eli is just like a way of life now and he's much bigger. If any of you guys have a cavapoo at home, that's what breed Eli is. Are your cavapoos as attached to you as this one is? I don't know if it's because I work from home or cavapoos are just kind of attached to their people, but this guy. Um, anywho, so I had the idea of taking one of my existing Outlander patterns. I believe this is Simplicity 8161. I have this in my stash, so I took the bodice from that and basically put the pattern on top of my blazer and, and went from there. I ended up doing a couple of adjustments right off the bat. One was making the bodice a little longer as well as doing a bust waist adjustment since my bust is pretty much the same size as my waist. Okay, so I definitely have some work to do. First things first, I need to fix this area right here. They don't quite match up, but I think this length is pretty good, so I'll just kind of smooth that out in the pattern. The fit is pretty good, except the obvious, it's it's way too small in the tummy area, which I kind of knew that was going to happen. I need to bring it over probably the way that it laces on the pattern. I need to bring it over at least three inches on each side, at least from the bottom down. So that's gonna probably take some brain cells on how to do that without making it gape in the front. The arm's eye is a wee bit too tight. So I think I'm gonna take it, um, I'm gonna widen it a little bit from right here, just probably like a half an inch all the way up to my shoulder. Right there. So all in all, I think it looks pretty good. Probably right from, actually, from right here, probably from right here down, I will slowly taper it into a point to right there to my stomacher, about three inches. So that's, that's going to be interesting. I think I will pin some fabric on me because that probably makes the most sense to pin fabric on me. I sure wish I had a mannequin that had my my measurements. This fitting situation would be so much easier, so. Okay. Okay, I think I'm going to get lucky with this fabric. The front piece, the front bodice piece is going to go over this pocket. 
I actually took my seam ripper and ripped out these stitches and it's actually a functional pocket so I think that's really cool. Unfortunately I am going to have this seam that runs through this pocket on the front bodice which I don't think is that big of a deal. The back piece is going to go right along the back seam so I actually I think I'm just going to cut everything out first besides the back and then place the back with its seam right along where the blazer seam is and fold the, all the fabrics over and so then I don't have to cut that seam which is really cool. This jacket is lined with this green, I want to say it's polyester. What is, does it say? It doesn't say what it's lined with. Or maybe nylon. I don't know. I'm gonna cut the lining at the same time as I'm cutting the the top. I also have this right here, the seam. Oh wow, there's a lot more fabric right there. So I think I'm going to just cut this and see how my seam allowance is going to be. Um, right here the lapel is just pushed up. So I'll have all of that. Luckily I missed the start right here. I'm gonna play around with pinning this in place and see where I end up. Alright, so I think what I'm going to do is just go ahead and cut out this piece and if I stitch it all together and if I don't like it, because there is the seam right here going through it, I'm going to stitch it together and if I don't like it then I will definitely take it out of the arm piece, the sleeve piece. Now the tricky part with this is trying to get the grain right because this is cut, I don't even know which way is the, the grain. But I'm, I guess I'm just going to guess. The other tricky part is going to be able to cut the left seam, the left ones, right where those, the right ones are at the seam placement. So I probably should mark where the seam is before I move on. So we'll say this is the seam right here. And then I have to also remember to flip my fabric over so I'm not cutting the same pieces too. Okay, so that was a lot. But I was able to serge everything. I did go ahead and serge the art, like the shoulder arm pieces, because originally I thought I was going to turn them over and finish it from the inside. But I think just serging them all, I don't even have to worry about finishing. So uh, I had to look back on my mock-up to see how I constructed it, and then I remembered I was smart and I wrote down all my steps on my handy dandy. <laughs> notepad. Let's try to get through this project. Hey friends, tis another day and like always I only have about two hours to sew. It's like the story of my life. Um, what I'm going to attempt to do is finish all of the edge seams. Just finish them. I'm going to take the two pieces, the lining piece and the outside feet piece, Sew them right sides together, turn them out and press, and so that way when I sew all of my side seams up, I don't have to worry about finishing necklines, armholes, or the waist. Generally, when you sew, you do those things last, but the reason why I'm going to do it this way is because one, I think it's going to be hard for me to try to fold under edges to try to finish them because I don't feel like cutting out bias strips and I don't feel like pinching down a quarter of an inch and then steaming and then just, I just don't feel like doing it. Two, I am going to be, I think, a flat, so this technique is kind of like flat lining the two, the lining and the regular fabric together and sewing those things as one instead of like bag lining where you do the, uh, the outside fabric all construction and then you do the lining separate all construction and then you merge them together. So I'm not doing that. After I sew up the side seams, I bought twill tape. So I'm going to place twill tape right on top of that seam. Another thing that I have to do is I have to cut my stomacher out. I am going to cut it out of this lovely uh, kind of quilted but not quilted linen, bed linen. I think it's a duvet cover that I found. It is very reminiscent 
rem reminiscent of the 18th century petticoats and it is cream and it kind of matches what Claire has on during that boar hunt episode. So I have that to do today and I have grommets to put in. So luckily since this is a upcycled garment, it already has interfacing in it. On that front piece, I already put in interfacing in the front piece to put the buttonholes and all of that. So thank you Pendleton for being an outstanding manufacturer of clothing to actually include that because a lot of modern companies do not. So I don't have to worry about that. I do have to worry about this little button. The original Pendleton blazer had one button in the front and I have a buttonhole. So maybe I can get around that. I'm not sure. Okay, so I'm going to stop blabbing and start sewing. So I'm going to be sewing the armholes the back neckline, all of the bottom, as well as the front, right here. The front neckline and the front closure. I thought about taking off this Pendleton tag of the original blazer, but I just kind of left it because one, I'm lazy, and two, I can just always remember where <laughs> this fabric came from. Okay, so I'm trying to take this top piece away from the lining, but this buttonhole is holding them together. So hopefully once I put the grommets in, I can put a grommet right here at this hole and then carefully stitch this back and just have it a fun little character fall, I guess. Okay, so it fits pretty well. Like the back, once I close it, it fits pretty, pretty nice. I'm gonna make the stomacher. Hello. I'm gonna need that. Please. Oh, I guess I'm gonna do this down here. Hi. Oh, now you're gonna get up. Okay, so I'm going to be working on the stomacher today. I have these two fabrics right here. I have this nice little cotton. It's kind of thicker. I don't know what type of weave this is, but it's like a nice little diamond pattern. I have this cotton tapestry like cotton scrap in my stash. I thought it kind of fits with the Outlander theme. So I'm going to do this on one side. So I right now I'm going to get my puppy off my fabric and cut my stomacher pieces. I ordered some steel metal. I don't even know what it is. Boning from Amazon. And it's pretty thick. I ordered this for the stomacher. The task today is to make my stomacher. And in order to cut the, the metal boning, I have my wire snip. So hopefully I could do that. And I read some of the online views about this boning. It does leave sharp marks and I don't have, I do have a journal but I don't feel like breaking it out to smooth out the ends. And I don't think sandpaper will do it. Some people have suggested to use electrical tape, which I think I have. I'll have to look. So right now what I'm going to need to do is work on the stomacher. I'm going to take the just the cream pieces and turn them inside out with right sides facing so the perimeter of that leave a front a gap on the top of it to turn it inside out and press and then i will sew the boning lines and slip the boning in and see how that looks i currently have one two three four five six seven seven boning channels marked out i think the original pattern only had five but i decided to add two more and i kind of think it needs more but I'm not quite certain. So we'll see where I'm at. If I need more, then I can always add more. Now, why, when the doctor walked into the room, did he fall? I have seven boning channels. I think I'm going to put in four more boning because with it being this high on my chest and with everything going to be laced in, do you see that rippling right there? It's not really, I feel like I need, I need that rigidity so it doesn't like concave on itself. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and uh, seal up. I did put tabs in so I can snap it into my bodice. So yeah, I'm going to put in four more. Hopefully I can fit it into between these two big 
or these channels right here into this V. And then I need to finish binding off the rest of the metal. Hopefully I have enough metal. I'm gonna work on that and check up on y'all in a little bit. Okay, so I think that fit, fit, fit? I think that fix problem, at least so far. So I'm going to spend probably the next hour or so putting the tapestry on the other side of my stomacher so I have a reverse stomacher. I am also going to finish the seams from the inside. I got some twill tape that I will use to, all I'm going to do is just trim the seams and then just put this on top and just hand whip it together. So when I check back in tomorrow, I'll be ready to put the grommets in. I also used the twill tape to create a bony channel in the front piece to help reinforce the metal grommets I will put in. Using chalk, I then marked where I thought the grommet should go and started making the holes. I'll link the grommet kit I bought from Amazon down below, but I highly recommend getting yourself a crocodile to create the holes if you are cutting through multiple pieces of fabric. Okay, so everything, all the grommets are in. I'm gonna go ahead and repair that and I'll, you know, it's all just kind of boring stuff, so I'll see you in the reveal. There are things that could be improved on the bodice, like the stomacher and the lacing. The modest neckline doesn't quite match up to Claire's busty outlander outfits, but overall I think it's not too bad considering it started out as a discarded wool blazer. I'm kind of liking the bodice without the lace and stomacher. It's given me 90s Chandler Bing vibes. What do you think? Be sure to subscribe to the channel because next week I will be finishing up my Outlander boar hunting outfit with Claire's knitted capelet and medicine basket. Thanks for watching!